Redditors what are some seriously scary slash disturbing ass stories that did indeed happen to you or someone you know? My dad was a boy scout leader. They were always up to something almost every weekend. One night dad left with the boys to go camping. Usually, I would go with them, but dad didn't want me to come along this time. Later that night, I'm woken up to my mom in a panic, because someone is coming in we lived in South Africa it was my dad. I noticed he was covered in blood. He told mom something, and then started bawling his eyes out. I had never seen my dad cry before that day. He was driving the boys to their camping site minus 5 boys in the back of his ute slash truck. This was in Stilly's, legal where I grew up, 6 boys in the other truck behind them. Dad was pulling a trailer with all their gear, whilst going 100kms slash h the trailer hits a pothole, and the weight on the trailer being so heavy, the trailer flipped. The car behind drove into the trailer and he flipped too. Dad got himself out of the car and immediately tried looking for the boys. They were strewn all over the highway. Several had compound fractures, broken bones which have pierced through the skin. Almost all had gravel burn. He always made the boys wear helmets in the back. He then found one of his boys lying in a pool of blood with his brain exposed. He wasn't wearing his helmet. He told the boys he didn't need it, and took it off where my dad couldn't see him sitting. He was never the same after that day, a very large piece of him died that day, he spiraled into depression and it still haunts him to this day. I used to live next door to this girl who used to go out with this guy. The girl was the typical girl next door, bubbly, friendly and generally nice to everyone. The guy seemed fine, didn't know him well, but any interaction I had with him was affable enough. So the girl next door had a dog, a yappy, irritating terrier that never stopped barked and would chase you up the street. She loved the dog. As her next door neighbor and friend for 10 years, I can attest that the dog was annoying, but it meant no harm. Basically a yappy, happy idiot. Coming back to the guy, he got it into his head that she was spending too much time with the dog and that it was impacting their relationship. Seemingly he expressed this a couple of times. The girl maintained her relationship with both guy and dog. This, apparently, did not sit well. Suddenly, the dog took ill and died. It emerged that that the guy had used weed killer to poison the dog's food. The dog died. The girl challenged the guy on this, and he admitted to poisoning the dog, citing his concern for their relationship as his reasoning. She broke it off with him, and he spent the next year harassing her and her family. I'd consider this a bullet dodged, but I've oftentimes tried to imagine his thought process to get to where he ended up. I like girl. Girl likes dog. Dog must die. Total psycho. Dated a guy on and off for a couple years. He had some serious issues, he'd been abused, and I felt bad for him. He got physical more than once and cheated on me, but I just kind of always ended up forgiving him and dating again. Eventually though I decided I was done after one of our breakups and made that very clear to him. He didn't take no for an answer, so I blocked him. He went nuts. Totally beyond the pale crazy. He started driving past my house multiple times a day, past my workplace. When I started seeing somebody new, he'd drive over to see if their car was parked at my house. If I went anywhere with them, he would follow us for miles. He also ended up buying a new car just to follow me in, since I always recognized his old one. He would make countless fake social media accounts and cell phone numbers to harass me and my new partner. He'd literally send me texts pretending to be someone else warning me about my new boyfriend. He'd obsessively contact my partner with blatantly fake accounts asking about what kind of sex he had with me, how many dates we'd been on, etc. I got a restraining order. I moved to a new place eventually, but he found me there anyway. I caught him driving outside of it many times. I always called the police, but they never did much, even when I took pictures. The cops always said they didn't doubt me, but that there just wasn't enough proof that he was stalking me, and they weren't going to arrest him if it would just be thrown out in court immediately. The restraining order was effectively useless. A month after moving into my new house he used another fake cell phone number to contact me. Dude sent me a 6 page letter via text about how he had a wedding ring for me, and wrote pages about how my new boyfriend wasn't right for me. He revealed that he'd been watching us for weeks through my windows, going into great detail about our interactions. How we sat on the couch, when we watched TV, what times I was going to bed, 
declarations that I hated my new life, and missed him, and would be with him again. References toward the dog and car. Oh yeah, someone slashed one of the car tires at one point. I wonder who. I sent it all to the police and the next morning he was arrested. The state charged him with harassment. I testified against him recently, and his lawyer basically did everything he could to make me seem crazy. Brought in a bunch of his friends and family members, to suggest I was unstable, and had imagined every incident. I was completely dumbstruck. The judge hasn't decided whether to find him guilty or not yet, but it's still unlikely there's enough there. I sleep with a weapon and I keep my windows blocked out constantly. I don't know if I'll ever feel safe again. Lesson learned. Don't date crazy. Or at least don't forgive it. When my friend was 14 she was walking home from school in uniform. When a car pulled up beside her, and a man in police uniform told her something had happened to her dad, and she should get into the car, so he could take her to the hospital. Police and unmarked cars were pretty common but it already smelled pretty fishy, since he hadn't asked her name or anything else to check who she was. She asked for his it, and when he didn't immediately offer it, he said something, like we don't have time, I'll show you, when we get there she took off running, and he didn't chase. Her dad was fine and took her to the police station to report it as soon as she was home. Turns out it wasn't the first time a man in a police costume had tried to get a teenage girl into his car in that area, but nothing ever came of it. A friend of mine is a nurse. She recently had a 18 year old guy brought in who failed at killing himself via light rail train. When he was brought in, he was severed in half at the waist and was missing most of one of his arms. They knew he wouldn't make it, but they tried to make him comfortable. Repeated attempts to reach his family failed until he admitted that he ran away from home because his family didn't love him. His parents were finally reached, were told of his condition, and they coldly refused to come to the hospital. The young man lived in agony for another 12 hours before dying. I was walking through a square at night in a smaller Chinese city when I was 17 to 18. There was nobody there except for two men off to the side of the square. One was sat on a bench casually smoking, while the other was lying on the ground on his back with his arms and legs rigid, but bent up in the air above him. His eyes were wide open and bugging out of their sockets. It was like every muscle in his body was tensed and he was not moving at all, while his friend was completely unfazed by the whole situation. Looking back now I imagine he was either having some form of seizure or was on some insane drugs, but at the time I wasn't sticking around to find out, I just got the fuck out of there. When I was doing my clinicals to become a certified nursing assistant I ended up in a slightly shabby nursing home. One of the residents had just died, and the teacher had gathered 20 or so students in the hallway to talk to us about post-mortem care. It was a long hallway with doors to resident rooms lining the sides. Most of the doors were slightly ajar. While the teacher was talking some trash flew out of an open door and landed on the floor at her feet. It was a few things like candy wrappers, but also heavier things like wadded tissues. It was thrown out of the door at about shoulder height. The teacher stepped forward and opened the door thinking maybe a confused resident might have thrown it. The room was empty. No one was in there. There was no waste basket, absolutely no way for trash to just fly out. The entire class was spooked, and you could tell the teacher was confused as well. We never discovered the cause, but a student did open the window in the room to let the bad spirits out. A few years ago, I moved out of my parents' house. Shortly after, my dog's health started to decline, she was 16 as it was, and she started having seizures. One day, my mom calls me, and asks me to come over when I get off of work, so I do, not thinking much of it. I get there, and she tells me my dog died the night before, and they buried her in the backyard, and she gave me her dog bed. A few days later, I stop by my parents house to get my mail, and while I'm outside at the mailbox, my dog comes running up to me. I was freaking terrified. Turns out, my dog hadn't died. She had a seizure, while my parents weren't home, and ran out the door, when they got home. When she didn't come back my mom decided it would be easier to just tell me that the dog had died. My dad didn't want to tell me yet. We had to have her put down a few days after that though. I heard this story from my dad. One of his co-workers mom had lived alone. One morning, she had woken up unable to move her limbs. 
She waited for two days stuck in her bed, unable to do anything. Lucky for her someone, I don't remember who, happened to come to visit her on the third day. Turned out she had an infarction in her brain, and it had made her unable to move. She was hospitalized for a long time, because she got into a really bad condition during those two days she spent stuck in place. At least for me the idea of waking up unable to move, and waiting two days alone, expecting that you die, is really disturbing. I used to be a deputy sheriff. Got a call one night about about 0300 in the morning regarding a male wearing all black, and knocking on the door to a million dollar home in a gated community with armed security. He told the home ER winner he was lost, and his motorcycle broke down. The home ER winner, an older couple in their 60s, did not open the door, and offered to call the cops. The male suspect left, and then came back about 20 minutes later and tried again, but was told to kick rocks. We pulled him over on the freeway and spoke with him. He was a younger white kid whose residence was in the ghetto of major city which bordered our county. He was wearing a black suit, but it was sort of ill-fitting and just didn't look right. Like maybe mom got it for him a few years prior. His story was he was looking for a house party he was invited to. He was also on felony probation for robbery. He had a backpack with him that was empty except for a huge hunting knife. We searched his phone and found he had Google Maps open with the home ER winner's address in it. He drove a good distance, easily 20 miles to get to the home ER winner's home. He was very polite, but the way he spoke you could tell it was fake and that he was a thug. I called the home ER winners and they didn't know this kid from Adam, and were quite scared. I arrested him for prowling. He went totally nuts, and started calling me the n-word, him not black, and threatening to kick my ass. He would not calm down, and had to go into the restraint chair in the jail. I did some follow up, and it turns out the home ER winners had a plumber come, and do some work at their home. The plumber shared the same last name as him. I listened to his jail calls the next day and he called someone who asked if he got what he was looking for. Turns out the person he called was his uncle who worked at the plumbing company and did work at the victim's home. We charged him with carrying a concealed knife and violated his probation. He got 3 years in state prison as the crime was so creepy the dad had to do something with it. Never got an answer as to what he was looking for or the whole story. Detectives could not charge the uncle, but the plumbing company did fire him cause it was so weird. Happened when I was 8 years old, a man broke into my house, while it was only my mom and I inside. Guy's wife was hacking the door though with a machete and kitchen knife, and screaming obscenities at her husband. My mom was shielding me, and pleaded for the woman, to stop as she has a child there. The wife actually stopped, and said that, if my mom opens the door, she'll let the both of us run off. This was enough for the neighbors to come in and subdue her. Husband turns out to have been cheating on his wife with another woman, and was trying to use my mom as a scapegoat. Used to work with a guy that ended up being arrested for child porn, disturbing because he was a quiet guy, wife, kids, typical middle-aged guy. When I was a sophomore in high school I had partied the night before with some friends, woke up early and headed back to my grandparents' house. The house was pretty old, but nice. My friend and I went upstairs where we ended up just taking nap. We both woke up to a high-pitched screaming girl. We both ran downstairs thinking it was someone in the house, but it was empty. We went outside to find my whole family around the grill and nobody heard a thing. When I was 7 years old my dad took me to Florida to visit a friend of his from his days in the army. He was taking us on an all-day fishing trip. As they were moving things from the truck to the boat, and preparing to set sail, was not a sailboat I'm just not very nautical, I was running up and down the big pier with this guy's little dog. I was supposed to stay within sight of the boat so my dad could keep an eye on me, but I went, wherever the dog did. I eventually wandered off chasing the dog, and got a little lost. I was trying to find my way back, when I came across this guy. 30 to 40 years old, sitting on the back deck of his very nice sailboat. This one was a sailboat for sure. He says I have a cute dog, and that I'm cute too, and my naive self just says thank you and laughs. He asks me what I'm doing on the dock alone, and asks where my parents are. I tell him I'm trying to find them, and he invites me inside his boat for a tour, while we wait for my parents to come around looking for me. I'm dumb so I say sure, and he helped me up into his boat. 
I put the dog down, and he takes me on a tour through the boat, and when we are at the highest point on the outside he has me look around for my parents. I see my dad and his friend still carrying things out of the truck and point them out. He says they don't seem to notice I'm gone yet so, if I want to continue taking the tour we can have fun, before he takes me back to them. I agreed. He takes me below deck and shows me all around, and we end up in his cabin sitting on his bed. I will admit, the boat was amazing. Really beautiful and he was probably rich as hell. He sat on the bed telling me about the places he goes, and the adventures he's had. He had been all over the world, and had pictures all over the cabin to prove it. He sat closer to me, and put his hand on the small of my back, and said if I really wanted to go on an adventure I could. He would take me with him, and we could leave right now. I just had to say yes, and he'd said say immediately. I asked about my bags and I didn't have any other clothes. I only had a little bikini and a white t-shirt, and flip flops on, and I was legitimately worried about my stuff. He said everything was ready, and he'd buy me whatever I needed at the first place we stop. I seriously sat there for a minute thinking about it, and in the end I told him thank you, but no thank you, because I'd miss my dad. He was smiling, and told me, that was a good reason to say no, and he casually led me to the back of the boat, and helped me down. Handed me the dog and said bye, and I waved goodbye in return. I walked back to the parking lot, where my dad was looking for me. The whole ordeal from getting lost to returning to my dad took maybe 10 minutes tops. Some days I wonder if I dreamed some of it. But I don't think so. This just happened recently. An acquaintance of mine had a really awful roommate. He would constantly harass her and her boyfriend, steal their stuff and just generally act pretty shitty. Well he kicked my friend and her boyfriend out and got some new roommates. These new roommates stabbed him to death in the apartment. 